Hello class. So in this um, video tutorial, basically what we're looking at is the allegation method. We talked about it extensively in class. We did a number of very useful and um, quite extensive examples or activities related to the method. And so this video is basically just to give you a review, recap the key points, and then also illustrate using additional examples how this method works so you can get um, your computations right all the time and often on the first attempt. So basically, the allegation method is typically used when you're compounding a preparation of a given strength and you're using um, two products of different strengths. You're mixing those two products to obtain your final compound preparation. And the key thing to note is when you're using this kind of method, the strength of your final product must be between the strengths of your original two or three products that you're mixing, actually. So if you had, um, a, if you wanted to have a product that is 10% strength, you can combine anything that is above 10 and below 10, but you could not mix two products below a percent with a percentage strength less than 10 to obtain a final product with a percentage strength of 10, right? So we look at a number of examples and that makes it clear. Or that should help make it clear. How it works is you have this allegation grid. It's very similar to your tic-tac-toe kind of um, setup. And the important thing is to know what goes into each um, square and how and the mechanics of how it works. So let me illustrate that very um, briefly and also how you can use it to solve additional problems. In the top left corner, you have the percentage strength of your higher or the higher percentage strength so if you have to be mixing two products because you have your final preparation has a certain strength you have one product that has a, a concentration that is higher than your final product so that one goes to your top left corner and in the bottom left corner you have your product with a lower percentage strength now in the middle, you put in the percentage strength or your concentration of your desired product. That always goes in the middle. And this is where the fun begins. Okay, so what happens is in the bottom right corner, you're going to find the difference between the higher strength and the desired strength. So basically, you subtract the concentration of your desired from the higher strength and that number goes to the bottom. So the number goes to the bottom and that number represents the, the parts of your lower percentage strength. Right? I will explain that a little bit more. In the top right corner, you have the difference between the lower strength and the desired strength and that number goes to the top right corner. And it's an absolute value. So no negatives on this grid. It's an absolute value. So basically, the number at the top right represents the parts of the higher strength um, product that you need and the number at the bottom right represents the parts of the lower strength product that you need okay so let's see how that works an example because examples really always work best for this kind of scenario in this first example you have you you wish to dilute an ointment it contains 14 percent sulfur and you're diluting it with, with, with petrolatum right so petrolatum basically means there's no sulfur in it it's zero percent and you want to make 60 grams of an ointment which contains 10 percent sulfur that's the concentration of your final product okay it says how many grams of the 14 percent sulfur ointment and how many grams of petrolatum will you need to make the dilution okay so let's look at the key things first of all our higher strength is the 14 percent so that's going to go in our, our top left we'll look at that grid in the next slide okay then your lower strength is zero percent because you're using petrolatum petrolatum basically has no sulfur in there so that's zero percent your desired strength is 10 percent these are all weight by weight by the way and your desired quantity is 60 grams okay so let's put these numbers in the grid have some fun top left goes your 14 because that's your highest strength 
bottom left is your zero because that's your lower strength petrolatum has no sulfur so at zero percent it goes to the bottom left our desired strength goes in the middle and that was 10 percent that's what we want 10 percent weight by weight so the first thing we need to know is the numbers that go in the top right and the bottom left or bottom right actually so the number that's going to go to the bottom left is going to be 14 minus 10 that gives us 4 we put that in the uh, bottom right so what that means is we need four parts of petrol atom and the number that goes to the top right is going to be 0 minus 10 or 10 minus 0 like I said it's always going to be the absolute value so there are no negatives on this allegation grid so the top right you have 10 which means you have 10 parts of the 14% um, sulfur okay now we need to determine the total number of parts in our preparation. We have 10 parts of the 14 and 4 parts of petrol atom, right? So that means our total parts is going to be basically 40. So 10 parts of the 14% sulfur and 4 parts of your petrol atom, that's 0% sulfur, that gives us a total of 14 parts. Right? It's very similar to how we weigh out stuff when we are cooking. 10 parts this, 1 part that. Total parts is going to be the sum of everything in there. So it kind of like makes sense. So now that we know the number of parts of each, we can compute how much of each component or each product that we need to make our preparation. And this is how it goes. Okay, The parts that you need about the total parts times the total quantity. So for the 40% so far, According to our grid, we need 10 parts of that. So it's going to be 10 over 14. 10 represents the number of parts of the 14% sulfur. And the 14 is coming from the total parts that we need. 14 plus 4. Likewise, for the 0% sulfur, we have 4 divided by 14. Okay, So we can multiply both of these um, ratios by 60. And that gives us 14.29 grams of the 14% sulfur and 17.1 grams of petrol atom. Okay. So to make our preparation, we will simply go to our balance way out 14.29 grams of 14% sulfur um, and then uh, 17.1 grams of petrol atom. We mix these two very nicely, homogeneously. And then we have our preparation, which will have a final strength of 10% sulfur. Okay. You could also get your second number by subtracting your first number from the total parts, uh, total quantity. So what that what I mean by that is after we calculated, for example, 14% sulfur, we know our total quantity is 60. And we determine that the number or the quantity that we need of the 40% sulfur is 42.9 grams. So we can basically subtract 42.9 from 60 and that will still give us 17.1. Right? So you have some flexibility there on how to compute the quantity of the other amount that you need if you have two components. So hopefully that was really clear. It's fun. It's real easy. Nice to do. Let's look at another example. This time it's liquid, so basically you have a volume by volume situation. Okay, so same thing. I'd like to summarize the information when I'm um, explaining the concept. So you have a higher strength of 90% alcohol, 90%, lower strength is 10%. Okay, our desired strength is 20%. That's what we actually want at the end of the day. And our quantity is at 1 liter or 1,000 milliliters. So let's put in the numbers in the grid, our allegation grid, and determine and proceed accordingly, actually. So top left goes our 90, bottom left our 10. And I'm hoping you're doing this with me as you're going along. In the middle, you have 20%, which is your desired quantity. Ah, guess what? And your bottom right, you have 20 or 90 minus 20, that gives you 70. And the 70, once again, represents the number of parts of your 10% alcohol. Okay. In the top right, you have 20 minus 10 or 10 minus 20, which gives you 10. So that also represents 10 parts of your 90% alcohol. 
your total parts is going to be 80 because you have 10 parts of your 90% alcohol and 70 parts of your 10% alcohol. So that gives you a total of 80 parts. We go ahead and set up our ratios as follows. For the 90% alcohol, it's 10 parts over 80, so 10 over 80. And then for our 10% alcohol, it's 70 over 80. Okay? We multiply each of them by 1 liter, and that gives us 0 0.125 liters for the 90%, and then 0 0.875 liters for our 10%. So basically, it makes sense, right? If you wanted to prepare 10, 20% alcohol, you kind of figure, at least intuitively, that you need a lot more of the 10% than you do of the 90% because of the difference in concentration. So basically how you do this is you go ahead and um, measure out 125 milliliters or 0 0.125 liters of your 90%. And then to that you add uh, 0 0.875 liters or 875 milliliters of your 10% alcohol. It's real easy. Okay, let's look at our third example. A relatively different one in terms of how the question is phrased and so I hope this gives you some insight and additional perspective on um, how to go about solving these kind of problems. It says how much sodium chloride 10 percent stock solution should you add to a hundred milliliters of 0 0.5 percent sodium chloride solution to make normal saline your normal saline is basically 0 0.9 percent that's your normal saline is isotonic is one of the most widely used um, solutions that you encounter in most most of it are not even in sterile preparations okay so what we need to do right now is set up our grid to determine the number of parts of each that we need. The, how this question is different from the other two that we talked about is this time it gives you the quantity of one of the pro, of one of the components that you use. It didn't give you the total preparation. So it's still enough information for you to determine how much of your 10% stock that you need. And we'll look at how you do that, right? In the beginning, the setup is very similar to what we've done in our last two examples. In your top left goes the 10%, bottom left 0 0.45. Now in the middle goes your 0.9% because that is normal saline. That's the it's it's a it's a known thing, right? When you talk about normal saline, it is 0.9% volume by volume oh here is weight by volume okay so we can determine what goes in the bottom right 10 minus 0 0.9 that gives you 9.1 and that represents the number of parts of your 0 0.45 percent NaCl solution or your half normal solution then we can determine what goes in the top right that 0 0.9 minus 0 0.45 and that gives us 0 0.45 okay and that represents the total or the number of parts of your 10 percent sodium chloride stock solution okay. we can determine our total number of parts that is 0 0.45 parts of your 10 percent NaCl stock solution and then also 9.1 parts of our 0 0.45 percent NaCl stock solution that gives a total of 9.55 parts. So having done that, we know the number of parts that we need. And so here we have 9.1, which represents the quantity that is needed for the 0 0.45 uh, stock solution, 0.45% stock solution. That represents the number of parts there. So we divide that by the total part, which is 9.55. And if we multiply that by the total volume that we needed, it should give us 100 ml. That's basically what the question said. So that's basically how it is different from the other ones. right? Normally, we're giving the total preparation. Here, it gives you the quantity 
or the volume of one of the components. So we solve for the total volume here. And our unknown is T, we solve for that, and that gives us 104.95 ml. So because we know the number of parts of our 10% stock, we can set up the um, ratio like we normally do, which is 0 0.45, representing the number of parts of our 10% NACL stock, divided by the total parts, which is 9.55, multiply that by our new our total volume, which is 104.95, and that gives us 4.95 milliliters. So that is how much you need to measure of your 10% sodium chloride stock solution to prepare the preparation or to make compound the preparation as you need to. Okay. So we looked at the allegation better. We reviewed the concepts when it can be used when you basically need a, a concentration of the final strength and you're mixing products or components of two different strengths, one above, one below your desired strength. It's very important. We looked at the grid, which looks like the tic-tac-toe. We talked about where the numbers go. We talked about the, how you determine um, the number of parts of each component in there, how you set up the ratio, and how you determine the quantities that you need. Okay, And it's real fun and easy to do. So once again, if you have any questions, please send me an email or stop by my office. The email is mdanqua at csu.edu. That is M D A N as a Nancy Q U A H at csu.edu. So have fun, guys.